Good morning, fans. Privateer FX. Coming at you, O2 May. Uh, RBA just had a surprise hike. Um, we're playing this sort of contrarian role here. We sold some um, Aussie yen here just at the 200 day 92.12. As you can see, the 200 day comes in at 92.13 here. Um, five pips underwater here right now. No drama. Uh, the thinking here is basically like, you know, three or three central banks tightening in a week. It can't be good for risk. Aussie and it's a good proxy for risk. Um, and at the end of the week, Aussie yen is going to be trading below 90, 90 yen. And I have a feeling dollar yen is actually going to lead that somehow, even though the U.S. is going to raise. And if they raise 50, okay, dollar yen is going to pop higher, but dollar yen is now um, getting a little bit extended, although we cleaned through the uh, 200 day yesterday, no problem. Um, we're running into this little, this will be the third point on this slightly downward sloper. Um, maybe we need to take a peek. Maybe we touch this and we break it over FOMC and then the market gets caught long or something like that or we go risk off. I'm not sure what's going to drive this exactly, but feels like this is going to run out of steam up here somewhere. This is the, I guess, the most important high here, uh, 138.17. So do we sneak above 17 just to give it a little probe and take out the last few remaining gasping shorts uh, and then turn? Or do we turn here at 74? I don't know. Um, but uh, you know, we're short Aussie yen, uh, not touching dollar yen at the moment. And we'll just see how that goes. Let's go to gold. Gold's going to have an interesting week. Um, maybe knee jerk on Wednesday with the FOMC. Will we get a chance to buy gold down at 1950? Boy, these dailies look like um, they really want to go down. And yesterday we had a little bit of a clean out, right? Just before the numbers, a bunch of shorts got stopped out. And now we're right back at 1980. Um, she really looks like she wants to go lower. So certainly we're going to probably, I mean, there's nothing certain in trading, but sometimes there is. It looks like we're going to get um, a move down through 1970. Are we going to get to 50? Are we going to get a move through 46? Um, does the U.S. raise 50 and gold goes to 1920, but then bounces back up because equities get trashed? Uh, a lot of things can happen this week. Uh, obviously with the FOMC and ECB lurking. Um, we're not short gold, uh, but we are looking for places to buy it. Let's just put it that way. Rates, as you can see from yesterday, are higher. Still really in the middle of nowhere. If you think the bottom of this 10-year range is 330, in our estimation, it's going to have a real hard, tr hard time getting getting below 330 or really getting below three we could probe down below 330 why because you know we think there's going to be a massive steepening of this curve and the long end of the u.s curve is going to come into question eventually i don't know who's going to question it but somebody is maybe it'll be buffett or or i don't know bobby john or some somebody's going to question it privateers questioning it and, you know, we're usually thought leaders and all of the billionaires in the world typically follow what we think. So eventually you're going to see um, these billionaires who tune in every day to privateer come around to the same thinking. So anytime you see yield down here, um, you want to sell the bonds. Uh, so, but at 360, at 356, there's nothing to do. Um, why am I showing you that if there's nothing to do? Let's look at cable. We got what we wanted on um, Friday, cable higher. Now we're just tr trading around this range. Uh, is cable going to go a little bit lower this week? I mean, I think so, just because of, you know, maybe it's just it's just not, not really in play. Unless I'm mistaken, MPC is not fucking around this week. ECB on Thursday, FOMC on Wednesday. Yeah, so I mean, 
with ECB raising and the U.S. raising, cable may have a little bit of a nibble or lower. Um, but again, like gold, we're looking to buy sterling on dips. They have the highest inflation rate um, of the sort of G10. And therefore, they're just screwed into higher rates, uh, even higher for longer, longer for higher, et cetera, et cetera. So we're trying to buy cheap ones um, in cable. Dollar Swiss, super crowded still. Retail is fucking owns the fucking loving shit out of this so it's going to be hard to go higher but of course forces are going to probably you know if it wasn't so crowded we'd be really uh looking forward to buying through 89.77 um we would be looking to draw pennants and fun technical you know very keep it simple stupid technical setups um and why do we always do the keep it simple stupid because what is a technical setup, technical analysis? I mean, it's kind of like Scientology. If you believe in it and you think it helps, it then it you, then it helps. Um, but it is a little bit of hocus pocus, and so we're only really concerned with with patterns that every single person, a four year old, can draw. Which is why we like horizontals, we like little pennants, we like head and shoulders. Every muppet in the world and their grandmother knows these patterns. Um, and so the reason they work, the only reason they work is that you need a shit ton of people to be trading them. Uh, and so that's, that's how I would sum up technical analysis as a guy who's, who read Neeson 30 years ago, and I know candlesticks better than most, um, but I also recognize um, what this basically is, and it's basically behavioral uh, pattern recognition. It's not, it's not not candlestick powder recognition it's like predicting the crowd anyway blah 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 9060 is the 200 day oh no that's not that's the 204 hour holy fuck the 200 days way the fuck up there wow 94 um anyway this shit's crowded uh but it should go higher right ecb raises euro swiss should get a boost uh the fed raises dollar swiss should also get a boost so let's let's keep an eye on that. So rather than selling cable or or, or um, buying Euro sterling, dollar Swiss is an interesting one, um, just because it's been on its knees for so long. Today we have um, a couple of interesting things. We've got CPI out of Europe at eleven, so that's definitely something worth watching. Uh, if this comes in hot, above seven percent. CPI flash estimate and core CPI. If core is above six and flash is above seven, um, we expect 50 tomorrow. Keep in mind, governor, uh, RBA Governor Lowe is speaking at uh, 1.20 p.m. Swiss time. Uh, we have jolts in the U.S. Um, is that going to come in hot? I don't know. Expecting 9.74 million. Um, Kiwi rates overnight tonight. If you're interested in that, we won't be awake for that. Governor Orr is also speaking after the Kiwis do their thing. Um, oh no, sorry, not Kiwi rates. Kiwi unemployment. Sorry. Kiwi unemployment tonight. But Governor Orr is speaking. If you're fucking around in Aussie and Kiwi, you might want to just keep a, a, a small eye on that. Um, equities, very muted vol. You want to sell high ones this week. Are we going to get a peak above 42.10 just to fuck some people? I mean, maybe. I don't really have uh, much to say about equities. They're just the volatility. Look at these tiny little shitty bars. They're just like tiny, tiny. I mean, size matters, man. And uh, why be, you know, if you're some slat turn woman, why would you be playing, um, playing with these tiny little fucking bars? Um... I don't know, 42.10 should break, and it's probably a fade. But again, we're not um, fooling around with yes. Anyway, we're going to watch closely this European CPI. Uh, we may try and uh, get long Euro Swiss today. And we're short Aussie yen, which is immediately underwater, 16 pips. But we got some powder uh, to play with. We may sell this again. Um, 
somewhere between 30 and 50. Basically looking for a mean reversion here on a risk-off week in the world of foreign exchange. That's all I got for you today. Good luck out there, peeps. Talk to you.